Hello everyone, I'm Manish from Simply Learn and welcome to the video on object oriented programming in PHP. In this video, we will discuss everything about OOPS concept in detail. But before that, let me tell you, according to indeed.com, the demand for PHP developers has massively increased to 834% since January 2020. However, in today's market, it is the fastest growing tech job across the industry. So, in today's video, we'll be discussing what is PHP, what are the concepts of OOPS in PHP, and finally, we will have a look at the demo where we'll be executing the code that has class, objects, inheritance, and polymorphism in it. Now comes the important question. What exactly is PHP? So we have spoken a lot about it so far, but do you know what it means? Well, PHP stands for Hypertext Preprocessor. It is a server-side scripting language that is embedded into HTML and used for developing dynamic websites. Now let's move ahead and understand the concepts of OOPS in PHP. So as you can see on the screen, I have listed down the eight concepts of OOPS that we will be discussing today. First is class, next comes objects, then it's member functions and member variables, then constructor and destructor, inheritance, and finally it is polymorphism. Now let's walk through each of the concepts one by one. First is class. It is a blueprint of an object that provides initial values for the state. A class consists of both data and functions and data and functions together are called objects. Now let's first have a look at the class. Let me create a file named class.php and let us write the code first. Here I have defined a class by using the class keyword followed by fruit which is the class name. Next I have added a pair of curly braces and added the entire properties and methods within the braces. So as you can see on the screen we have declared a class named fruit that contains two properties called name and color. Along with that I have also added two methods set name and get name. Now, now the purpose of these methods is for setting and getting the name property. So let me give you some in important information. When you define a class, a variable in it is called property while a function is known as method. Now let us execute the code and see the output. Let's go to the browser and type localhost slash followed by the file name.
here's a file class.php and as you can see on the screen the code is running perfectly now that was about the class next comes objects so it is an instance of a class basically a variable holds the data of a class now we define a class once and create as many objects in it so for a better understanding let me give you an example suppose a car is a class so mercedes benz and bmw would be objects now let's see objects classes are incomplete without objects so we can add as many objects as we want from a class and every single object has the properties and methods defined in the class but those objects will have different property values so objects of a class are created using the new keyword now let me open the code editor and let's create another file called obj.php so this code will be the same let's copy and paste it here now let me type the code for object as you can see i have used the new keyword to create object of the class fruit similarly banana would be another object and now we'll use the set name function to set the name to apple on this object on the apple object that we have created similarly we will set the name for the banana object there's an extra bracket here let's move it now moving forward let us type the code to display what we have added into the objects for this can you guess which method we'll be using yes the get name method will be used to display the name saved onto the object using the set name method now that our code is complete let us run and check if it's working correctly let me go back and refresh now here we have our object.php file yes the code runs perfectly the fruit program and it is displaying apple and banana from the two objects that we created i hope now you have clearly understood the concept moving on to the next one let's talk about the member variable and member function a member variable is defined within a class the data can be accessed by the member functions alone now once the object is built these variables are called attributes of the object whereas member function is defined within a class and is used to access object data if getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So next comes constructor. So it allows an individual to allot an object's properties while the object creation, while a destructor is a function that is called when the object stops working. We will have a look at the constructor program.
So constructor allows an individual to allot an object's properties while the object creation. Now suppose you build a program using constructor function. PHP will automatically call the construct function while creating an object from a class. Also, remember that when you write the construct function, always prefix it with two underscores. Now let's have a look at the example where we will be using a constructor function with calling the setName method. Now this setName function is often used when you assign a value to the name attribute. Now let's open the code editor and create our constructor file. We'll again create the two properties named name and color. Now we will create a constructor with two underscores and a construct keyword. And I'll give the two properties as the attributes to the constructor. Now in this program we will be using the constructor function as the set method to set the names and color of a fruit by default during the object creation itself. We still need to create the get functions. Now let's create an object to invoke the constructor. Now since the constructor has attributes, we will have to give the values for the attributes as well. So the fruit would be strawberry and the color would be pink. So this creates a new object and it gives the values to the constructor. in the PHP script and our HTML code as well. Let us save the code and check if it's working. Let's go back, refresh. Now our constructor file is visible. Let's click on it and yes. So when the object strawberry is created, the attributes we have given to the constructor strawberry and the color pink were already assigned to it and it is displayed in the browser itself. Now that the constructor program is done, next let's see an example of how a destructor works. Let's open the code editor, create another file destructor.php now the destructor code will be very similar to the constructor one so we will copy the code into the destructor file and make some changes. So 
let us remove this we don't need it and write a destructor function so destructor function is written similarly how constructor function is written so it starts with two underscores and a destruct keyword it does not have an attribute now why did we delete the get functions is because we will be using the destructor for it Also, we won't be needing this. Just the object creation is sufficient. Now let's save our program and do the drill again. Open the browser. Here a destructor file is visible and it shows the fruit is strawberry and the color is pink so when the object function is complete and the program ends the destructor function is called which displays the strawberry and the color pink now comes inheritance so it derives new classes or child classes from the parent class however inheritance can have its own properties and methods too so inheritance has two classes first is parent class and the other one is a child class now let's talk about each of them in detail so parent class is otherwise called a base class that is inherited from another class and a child class is a subclass that inherits from another class a child class can have subclasses and derived classes now let's have a look at the inheritance program so the child class is derived from all the properties and methods from the subclass. In addition, it can have its own properties and methods too. So an inherited class is defined by using the extends keyword. Let's look at an example. Let's open the code editor. So I've taken the liberty to create the inheritance.php file and write some of the code that we have already written. So I'll be writing only the code that is necessary for the inheritance part. Now also remember when you derive a child class from a parent class only the public methods are derived into the child class. So we will be creating the methods as public in order them to be inherited. this function public let's end this class and create another class in order to inherit this class so we'll name another class as cherry extends fruit and we'll create another function for cherry so this function is exclusive to cherry
so we have given a message through this method now let's create an object cherry new cherry and give the values for the attributes of this constructor Let's save the code and check if it's working. Well, there seems to be an error. Now let's try to resolve it. Okay, got it. So we created the object within the cherry class so it got localized what we need to do is put that code outside of the cherry class and it should work fine now yes so is cherry a fruit or a berry a cherry is a fruit and the color of the fruit is red and now we will talk about the last concept that is polymorphism so polymorphism has many forms the same function is utilized for different purposes. It has a class with a variety of functions simultaneously sharing a common interface. So inherited methods are overridden by redefining the methods in the derived class. Now let me write the code to make it clear. So I've already created the polymorphism PHP file. I've copied the inheritance code into the polymorphism part and then now we'll make the changes into the derived class that is cherry so let's create a property named weight now to override the constructor and the intro function from the fruit class we will have to create the same functions in the derived class also now this function construct has got one extra attribute in comparison to this function construct let's create the intro function too
Now a code is ready. Let us create another object to invoke the functions. Now, did you notice what we did here? So, when we created the object cherry for, for the cherry class, we gave three attribute values instead of two. In order to invoke this construct function, uh, not this. Let us run it and check. So it runs perfectly. It displays the fruit, the color and the weight. Now we have reached the end part of the video on the object oriented programming in PHP. I hope it was informative and interesting. And if you have any queries about the topics covered in this video, please ask away in the comment section below. Our experts are 24 seven ready to solve your queries. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and keep learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.